okay? So we, uh, we sort of derived this equation and said it's, it was S33, but then we said we're going to call S33 the vertical stress. Um, <coughs> and so this is how we can compute the vertical stress. And it, it's important to note that the density here is the bulk density. So we really should say that this density is like the bulk density. And that, that's due to the fact that, you know, below a few tens of feet, you know, down to the, below the water table, the, the earth has got solid grains. It's made up of solid grains. Saturated by a fluid, could be water and hydrocarbons. And so the bulk density is the density of the fluid times the volume fraction of the fluid plus the density of the solid times the volume fraction of the solid. And the volume, another way to say, there's another, I said volume fraction, but there's another word for that, especially when you just have fluid and solid. What's the volume fraction of the fluid? There's another word for that. Porosity. Right. Yeah. Saturation would be if you had two fluids, and you're, you're one, the volume fraction of one with respect to the other. But when you're talking about a fluid and a solid, you can sort of lump all the fluids together, right? And the total volume fraction of all the fluids is also known as the porosity. So most rocks would have 15%, 10% porosity. So the bulk, in that case, the you know, say it was 10% porosity, then the the bulk density would be the density of water. Uh, if it's a water-saturated fluid, it'd be the density of water times 10% plus the density of the rock times 90%. Right? That when you add them together, that's the bulk density. So then you just integrate this equation. Uh, you know, we're going to assume that you can assume for the most part that the gravity is a constant, right? And we integrate over the z direction, where you know the z direction is going to be the direction from the surface to the center of the Earth. So our coordinate system will be located like that. Now in offshore areas, so in offshore areas we have in offshore areas now we have Water there, and you know our, our z coordinate is going to be the same from the surface pointing to the center of the Earth. But we have this region where we have water. Well, the density of water is, for the most part, constant. Right? The density of water is constant. So now we can just take the density of water multiplied by gravity multiplied by z w. So this point right here would be z w, right? The depth of the water. Okay, so that first term would give us the sort of head pressure, right, for fluids, the head pressure. Uh, and then we have to carry out the integration now from, from ZW to, to Z. So, you know, whatever, whatever depth we're interested in, we start the integration at ZW and go to Z and we have that. Okay. Um, another... Another word for this, I almost used it, but I, but I haven't defined it, but another word for this uh, S vertical is uh, the overburden. So you might see or hear that. So the overburden pressure or the overburden stress, this is another word 
commonly used phrase for the vertical stress. So a couple rules of thumb. The density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed. That's in fact the definition of a gram, right? I mean, that's how they came up with it. Right? That's what a gram is. So, um, uh, you know, the, the mass of a cubic centimeter of water. Okay? So that's easy. And that increases at a rate of about 10 megapascals per kilometer. So that's something that's pretty easy to remember, 10 megapascal per kilometer. Okay? So that's that's the uh, that's how the that's how the stress the overburden stress increases, 10 megapascal per kilometer, right? So if I ask you, um, what's the vertical stress at two kilometers? What is it? 20 megapascal. There it is. Right. So uh, or you know another way way to remember is I'm sorry, t two kilometers into the ocean. <laughs> so that two kilometers into the ocean which I guess would only occur very, very deep in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, yeah? Um, can't remember. I think I did allow, I think I do allow critical sheets, but I mean, the whole point of these being rules of thumb, that's things you should memorize. Right? I mean. If I do ask you to, if I let you, if I let you have an equation sheet, I'm not going to come around and check every one to make sure you don't write these things down. But th I mean, these are these are things you really should memorize. I mean, that's the point of a rule of thumb. Right? Or, uh, if I ask you for the exact answer, you, you know, you, you go to the lab, you'd measure the density of the rock, and you perform the integration. Right? This is, a, you're an engineer. Sometimes you got to make decisions quickly. Try to memorize these rules of thumb, and they might help you. Okay. So the density of rock is 2.3 grams per centimeter cubed. That's not so easy to remember. But the, the second part is it increases at a rate of 23 megapascal per kilometer, or very, very conveniently, 1 psi per foot. Right. So what is the overburden stress over the continental United States at 8,000 feet? 8,000 psi. Right. Very easy. Okay, so if we do have a density log, we can, you know, we can get a more exact answer because we can we can integrate that equation. And now I got to stand up on my soapbox for a second. <laughs> I actually uh, I hate this plot for numerous reasons, but it's in the book, so I use it. And I, but but more than this particular plot, I hate the way all of these plots are drawn. They're ubiquitously drawn like this, and I think they're all wrong. Um, you know, when you when you make a plot, you shouldn't you shouldn't r label the plot like x versus y. It's not a fight. It's not two people boxing each other. Right? It's it's uh, you know really what you should say is, and, and really you shouldn't even say x versus y, but you would say y versus x, right? But it's y is a function of x. That's the way it reads. Right? So apply that to this plot. And ubiquitously, since we've ever seen a plot when we were in elementary school, always the dependent variables on this axis, right? So without any other knowledge about than what you learn in elementary school about figures and what I just told you about how to read a plot in words, this says that depth is a function of density. Does that make sense at all? That implies that this is the that that implies that we're changing the density and measuring the depth. We're not. Right? We're changing the depth by drilling and measuring the density. So at a very minimum, in big bold letters somewhere, if you're going to plot it like this or everywhere, you should say that this is the one case where we're going to have the independent axis be the ordinate, you know, the, the y-axis. The independent variable. Right. Um, I mean, there's other reasons it sort of doesn't make sense. I mean, a, a lot of reasons you, you would plot something is because you want to know the rate of change of something, right? So if you try to read off the rate of change of you know, the rate of change of depth with respect to density, 
or the, I mean, it's that right there, which is undefined, which means you know, that doesn't make sense. The, it's the derivative of the curve, right? The derivative here is undefined. But it's not, the density is not undefined, and the rate of change of density with respect to depth, which is a more sensible question, is a constant in that region. And it's a constant in that region, why? The rate of change of density with respect to depth, I'm going down, and the, and the density isn't changing. Why? Because I'm over water. I didn't tell you that day, but you can, well, I guess I guess it does say CPS. Okay. So it's over water. So you'll always see these plots, but it doesn't mean they're right. <laughs> in fact, so, you know, I, I record my lectures and I post them on YouTube, and I don't hide them from anyone, so other people than you guys will watch them. And I had some guy write on there a comment one day. As a professor of petroleum engineering, you should know that these are the way the plots are always presented in this industry. It doesn't make them right. Okay. Doesn't make it. Just because something's always been done some way doesn't mean it's right. In fact, that's the worst reason anyone could ever give you to do something. Why should I do it that way? Well, that's the way we've always done it. That should be a, an alarm to, to say, well, is this the right way? It's like an answer you give a two-year-old. Because I said so. You know. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so, so with this density log, uh, you know, the, the squiggly lines are the, the actual data, right? So this was the data that's actually taken from a density log, sort of in this region. And you'll know that you'll notice that you know the seafloor is up here, so there's sort of a gap in the data, and that's pretty standard. It has to do with the fact that density is really, really low at the sea, density of the of the rock, you know, which is really sand and other stuff, right? At the seafloor, it's it's very, very low, and it's hard to get accurate measurements. So you'll you'll often see uh, that the density logs won't start until some depth below the seafloor, and so this entire region in here is sort of an extrapolation, right? There's no there's no real data there. Uh, well, in fact, this this entire region is an extrapolation. Right? Uh, but then once we, you know, from here down, we can we can trust that data, and and we can integrate it. Uh, and that's what the uh, density log integration would look like. So, but I mean, that's another reason the plot doesn't make sense, like written drawn like this, because. I mean, again, going back to Calc 1, what is the integral in words? What is an integral of a, what is it in words? Area under the curve. Well, not on this plot, right? It's, it's the area to the left, it's the area to the left side of the curve. It's silly. So anyway, I'll quit picking on this. I mean, there's other things wrong. This particular plot is really bad because, first of all, uh, it, sh it should be grams per cubic centimeter, not grams per centimeter. That's another problem. <laughs> and then on top of that, on the, you know, down here on density, they, they use SI units, and then over here they have feet. So they're using mixed units on top of everything else. So it's shameful. You know, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine how my graduate students feel when they bring me a plot. I think, you know, when you, a good plot, I think I already mentioned this when you, when you go to do your labs, and, you know, this is the most, a good plot should, should need no explanation. You should look at it. It should tell you everything you need to know uh, just by simply looking at it, a well-designed plot. It actually makes your job simpler in the writing because you can just say refer to the figure. Not refer to the figure and notice that <laughs> the ordinate axes are switched, so when I integrate it, I'm actually integrating the left side of the curve. You know, you don't need to do all that if you just make a good plot. Okay, so back to this. Uh, if you integrate the area under the left side of the curve, then you get this. And now, thankfully, they switch to a consistent unit system where it's PSI here and depth here. And... Uh, you get this kind of stuff. So, so that, you know, from this, we can see, and you, I mean, that was actual density logs, and you can see that this is fairly straight, right? So we could have done a pretty good job. I mean, 
you know, it's fairly straight that's saying that a rule of thumb is close to holding, right? Be, and that it changes some at some constant rate as a function of depth, right? And I think if you go back, uh, you go back and look, and you see, let's see. You see that this sort of region in here doesn't change a whole lot. I mean, I, I was hoping it's uh, two point. Uh, two point three grams per centimeter. Two point three <coughs> grams per centimeter. So it's you know maybe it's a little off. It's more like two point four grams per centimeter, maybe. But uh, it's close. That two point three grams per centimeter is a you know. Of course, not all rocks have the exact same density. That's a that's an average over every type of rock there is. Okay, but most sedimentary basin rocks that we're interested in, 2.3 grams per centimeter is a good rule of thumb. Okay, I think we'll stop there today. <laughs>